Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. A little bit of news here at the top. We had two resorts open, and actually it was a really interesting race. Two horses sort of running towards the towards the line here, and A Basin announced they were opening today, Arapaho Basin in Colorado, and then Keystone said, well, we'll just open up, uh, we'll open up Saturday night because they can do some night skiing there. So Keystone actually uh, nipped them right at the line. But uh, for the, uh, the honor of opening first, uh, I think they're the very first resort to open across uh, the United States, as far as I know. But that's your live view of uh, Keystone up there. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Of course, this is all very early season. You'll have probably one run to choose from. There's Arapahoe Basin right there. There's your one run up, um, I believe, up Black Mountain Express. And you've got, I think that's High Noon if I'm not mistaken there, but uh, you can see it. You can see some folks down here uh, kind of waiting at the uh, the base, and and there's your run. I mean, it's going to be a beautiful day today across Colorado. There is a little bit of snow coming in the forecast. We'll talk about that. Uh, right now, a lot of that emphasis is up here. This is uh, this is Revelstoke up there. They're, they've got several chances of continuing snow in the forecast all down the road. And again, this is where most of the precip with this first, second, and even third surge of the atmospheric river is headed. Pacific Northwest, BC, interior BC. So looking really good up there uh, for today. Let me show you radar across the west here. So this is all part of the first surge, and you can really see the axis. I've been talking about this the last few days. That's where really, if you go right along the axis and north, that's where you're going to see the bulk of the precipitation. That's sort of where the jet stream or storm track is setting up. And so that's that leaves Idaho in the, uh, in the storm track looking good. Parts of the Tetons, Yellowstone, Wind Rivers up into Montana, certainly uh, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and of course, B.C. and Interior B.C. Now south of that line, only getting brushed with pieces in Utah and in Colorado. So that's how that's going to uh, work out. Here's my uh, my bullet points. Here are my bullet points for the next uh, for the next several days. So this is what I'm seeing. So you've got the atmos atmospheric river, a few different surges on that. I'll show you the intensity forecast for that coming up. But three surges through at least 11.3, probably beyond that as well. Overall, the accumulation through a lot of the Pacific Northwest BC coastal range is above 3,500 to 4,000 feet. Interior BC, it's just a touch higher. Um, and and p a piece of that will break off today into tomorrow, and you could see that happening on that radar image I, I was showing you into the interior Rockies. But And some of that will go through northern Utah and northern Colorado, but again, it's going to stay mostly north of that axis line. Best odds of snow here. It'll run us all the way into that first week of November. You've got Colorado, Tahoe, Utah. I'm going to include Idaho from now on. You've got Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. And look at Interior BC. Several chances of, and you can see the surges there with the timing all the way uh, through 11.6 and probably beyond 11.6 um, there. Um, drilling down on that just a little bit, a few select locations. Uh, Alta, you've got about five inches coming between this afternoon tonight and the morning of tomorrow. So kind of a quick surge coming through. Snow mass one to three. Yesterday I mentioned sort of the fork in the road. Where will that low go? It looks like it's going to kind of split the distance. So um, somewhere right in between. Jackson Hole, I up that. Uh, with that slight shift uh, to a foot uh, between today and tomorrow. Now, the Payette National Forest in Idaho up there, if you're familiar with that area, uh, central Idaho, Brundage is up there, uh, four to eight inches between uh, today and tomorrow. Um, generally above 5,000 feet, um, maybe lower than that at times, but generally above five. Uh, Rainier, six. 3, 10, and 16. You can see the different surges, the different surges there for the Fitzsimmons range up in the interior, or not interior, but the coastal range of BC, and also Mount Hood. So we'll play with that through the course of the ski season. I'll just kind of pick and choose random resorts and areas. Uh, but of course, once we get into ski season and we get that 
we get the snow level down to the valley floor, I'll be using um, uh, much more detailed maps with specific amounts at all the resorts. So we'll make that transition as uh, as I see fit. But here is the, uh, this is water vapor. So, I mean, clearly you can see the river. You've got a strong jet escorting in waves of moisture into the west. So that's going to continue through the course of time. Um, let's talk a little bit about the forecast radar. So this is the forecast radar. This is we'll start it up at noon time today. I mean, look at the axis right here. You've got all this precipitation surging into the interior Rockies. So it's brushing northern Utah. You've got pr hitting pretty squarely there into the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, Yellowstone. Um, there's your snow in a lot of uh, southern and central Idaho. You've got heavy precip up and down Oregon, Washington and Northern California. The snow around Tahoe, that's gonna be mainly above 9,000 feet. So that of course precludes a lot of areas. Uh, pushing ahead, here's the dinner hour. All right, here's uh, probably 6 a.m. on Monday. Now on 6 a.m. on Monday, just a little brushing right there of the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So definitely not hitting squarely, but you've got some um, snow left over in the Tetons, some snow left over in the Northern Rockies. All right, there's the lunch hour on Monday. There's the dinner hour. Let's move into, there's the early morning hours of Tuesday. There's the, uh, there's the dinner hour, roughly on Tuesday. Um, here are the, here's the early morning hours on Wednesday. So you're starting to see the second surge come in here into the Pacific Northwest. So we get the first one out of there, runs right through the Rockies, and then the second one starts to move in. But again, the targeting is mainly up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, BC and the Northern Tier. Looking at the atmospheric pressure anomalies. Um, so we'll start this up today, and, and you can really see, again, there's your, there's your surge, there are jet streams included right there. Um, and Hurricane Melissa down there in the Caribbean. That's going to lift up through Jamaica very slowly with extremely heavy rain. It's going to be just terrible down there, but eventually it will get picked up and escorted away. All right, second phase. Now, this is tomorrow. This is the 27th. Um, so we talked about that low, that where it would actually track yesterday, and it's actually going to end up somewhere right in here. So again, right in between the AI track and the other track we talked, the operational track. And so it's going to produce some wind, a little bit of a pressure disturbance there through Colorado and Utah, just enough to uh, lay down some snow accumulation. So again, that's going to kind of dive in that direction. All right, looking at the final phase, this is Halloween. This is Friday the 31st. So most of the action, the pressure drops are out here. That's where your deep low pressure is going to be. So that leaves us higher and drier with high pressure here in those oranges and reds on Halloween for a lot of the West Coast. So if you were to look at the jet stream forecast, it would look something like this. So that does not, does not bode well for snow across the West on Halloween at this point. Here's your jet for today. Clearly you can see this, this jet plowing in to the West Coast and escorting in that moisture into the interior Rockies. Looking at the forecast for intensity on the atmospheric river valid for the Pacific Northwest, You've got the current surge, and then you've got another one coming in, 28, 29, and then this one's back up. This one's increased again. This one's around the first, second of November, and you might actually have another one as we kind of go five, six, seven. But that's how that's going to play out as far as intensity. That's integrated vapor transport, and then some of that would get overthrown or blown into the um, interior Rockies. So there would be some benefit for Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, potentially northern Utah. We'll have to see. Um, here's the uh, precipitable water. So you're looking at looking at moisture within the atmosphere in the in all of the column of the vertical of the atmosphere through all the layers. And so you can see I'm looking for the areas of green and yellow in particular as those get those river those little streamers get moved in and entrained within these storm systems. So this runs uh, today all the way through the 9th of November. Let's start this up at the beginning here. There we go. Current. Little surge there, another little surge there, and then another surge right there, and a, probably another one there by late November. So um, nothing huge in the interim, um, but maybe a larger one as we get into November. 
All right, here's Precip, the animation on Precip over the next 10 days plus. Clearly, you can see the axis right here. So everything that's heaviest is north of that line. The initial storm sort of does brush Utah and northern Colorado, but the biggest amounts are up here. Pacific Northwest, Interior BC, parts of Idaho, Northwest Montana. That's where the brightest colors are. Um, that's where we could see feet of accumulation. So that's an impressive animation. All right, let's go to Jackson. Here's the snow plume for Jackson. This accumulates about a foot of snow through November 10th. We've got an initial surge and then a slow pickup, a slow accumulation there as we kind of work our way through new, uh, mid uh, early November into mid-November. Again, that's Jackson, Wyoming. Let's go to Berthoud Pass, Colorado. Less than impressive here, very light stuff. Uh, four to five, maybe six inches of snow there on the ensemble mean through November 10th. Uh, on the extreme end, some of the air bars are up around 10 to 12 inches, but not a lot happening there through Colorado because the axis is just north of you. Here's McCall, Idaho, so central up there in Idaho, Central Mountains, Payette National Forest area. Even in McCall, which is at about 5,000, maybe 5,100, you're looking at about 9 inches of total snow on the ensemble through November 10th. Certainly more as you go up in elevation through a lot of the, the national forest there. Like I was saying, I mean, you could be up 8, 9, 10 inches, maybe more, maybe up to a foot. If you're up there at say seven, eight, nine thousand on some of the highest peaks up there, so that's McCall. Um, here's the five-day snow forecast. So just through the first of November, essentially, um, you've got—I mean, the biggest stuff's up here. Where anywhere you see the purple shading, that's over six inches. That's a minimum of six. And then you get into the bright pinks, and that's a foot or more. I mean, you're looking at three feet up there in the parts of the coastal range. And again, you can really see the, the axis. Most of the snow is going to be north of that line. Let's do a little bit of a zoom. Now, we'll take you into Wyoming, Montana, a bit of Idaho, Utah. So in Utah, you can see the, the Wasatch right there. That's a five-day snow forecast. You're at at least six inches, at least six up there, uh, probably up to six, maybe seven or eight potentially through the, uh, the high Uintas, the, uh, the Wasatch, the northern, uh, the Bear Range up there. And then you've got uh, the Wind Rivers, the Tetons, probably 6 to 12. Like I said, I'm probably going 12 up over the very highest Tetons with this, this push. Maybe up to 6 over the northern mountains of Colorado, but then significantly less as you go south uh, of that area. Um, here's Idaho. Look at the nice uh, six to eight inch range there with some of those purples up to the northern parts of uh, Idaho, up in a glacier, up in Montana. So we've got really good and then up in the parts of uh, uh, interior BC and uh, uh, just a lot of that, uh, that uh, Alberta zone. One more zoom, and this is into Colorado, and talk about a sharp cutoff. I mean, there's basically nothing south of I-70. You know, it just, again, it really just, the storm track, that axis really determines the fortunes of so many uh, locations and ski areas. Uh, just not a lot there unless you're in the northern mountains. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update on this Sunday. I appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.